The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have called us together to be your people. Help us to rest assuredly in your gracious love. Grant us generous hearts to share with joy all that you give. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I say this uh, often, I really, really like having confirmation on Reformation Sunday. It seems such a fitting time to have uh, affirmation of baptism for our ninth graders. As I was thinking about this service, I thought about how for quite some time, Reformation Sunday was a day for Lutherans to gather together and talk about how marvelous it is that Luther helped lead the Reformation, to talk about how the church had gone astray and now the great Martin Luther had restored us to the right path. I think that we probably overdid that a little bit, um, that maybe this isn't the best way to talk about it. If you are in worship and you are the hero of the story, it might be time to go back to the book and check again. It's not always great for us to gather together and talk about how wonderful we are and how much better our church is than other churches, huh? If we take a close and personal look at history, I think we will find that what matters most about the Reformation is that God's people were reminded and recalled to turn to Jesus and there receive the love of God. In the centuries that have passed, the church has continually needed reform. During each of our own lives, we too need reformation. That is, we need to be reformed in our faith in God through Christ. We need to return to the Lord, to experience a reform in our own faith and be reminded over and over to look to Jesus and to find in him your entire reason for hope and life. Today we get to celebrate these three wonderful young people. Thanks for reading lessons as you did we decided that Jaden should have to read the longest one since he's so much taller than the rest of us. That made sense. If he's going to be bigger, he gets more words uh, to read. Well, these are some wonderful young people, and they're be, being confirmed today. And we give thanks to God that God has given them as a gift to their families, and God has given them to us as part of Trinity Lutheran Church. Now in the years uh, since the green hymnal came out, we've been calling confirmation by a different name. We call it affirmation of baptism. And while this is a simple adjustment to terms, there might be something important in this change. Confirmation has the sense of ratification or approval or validation. That is not what's going on here. We're not approving anything that has taken place. And so we 
call this the affirmation of baptism. And if you look in the dictionary, the word affirmation is, is not that different. In fact, it can be seen as a synonym for confirmation. Yet it is affirmation of baptism. And this has more a sense of um, promise and pledge, assurance, and declaration. Sometimes I have probably even myself suggested that in affirming their baptism, these uh, young men and this young woman sort of make the vows spoken at their baptism their own. Yet that isn't a very good description. It would be wrong to suggest that now those promises made in the water and the word, now they're really going to take effect, really going to matter to them, really to their lives. Rather, we are proclaiming that the promises God has made in their baptism continue to shape who they are and to call out their God-given gifts for their service to the world. I think about how I have uh, had the privilege of participating in a renewal of wedding vows for people celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Perhaps affirmation of baptism is a little bit like that. You don't have a renewal of wedding vows because now you're really going to take it seriously, huh? You know, after 50 years now, let's really be married. I think confirmation is more like that uh, affirmation of those vows. And so we rejoice with these three as we mark the affirmation of their baptism and I want to invite each one of you as well to join in the same affirmation of taking note of the commitment God has made to you in washing over you with the water and the word, in uniting you with Jesus' death and resurrection, in promising to you that God will hold you now and forever and ever. Amen. And now the sermon. I hope you're comfortable. It's a little warm, but that's okay. Always on Reformation Sunday, we have this uh, marvelous text from the Gospel of John. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And then the people give an ironic response. We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free. And if you know the story of the people of Israel, you know that, of course, they have been in bondage. They are people who knew terrible bondage in Egypt. And among their most important holy days is the celebration of Passover when God set them free from that bondage. They celebrate that every single year. And so we would really like to gather together and talk about how marvelous it is that we are Lutherans and have uh, the Reformation as our heritage, and maybe we might want to spend some time criticizing those Jews in Jesus' day for their historical amnesia and their odd spiritual arrogance, their resistance to God's judging word, their resistance to God's saving grace. I think it's kind of fun to criticize people who can't defend themselves. And that way, too, we can avoid the hard work of admitting our own denials of the bondage we know in our own lives, our own captivity to the broken ways we operate in the world, our own spiritual arrogance and our own ways of resisting God's saving work, resisting God's judgment and God's grace. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We are in bondage to sin, huh? And cannot free ourselves. Freedom is the great gift that Jesus offers in salvation. Freedom from sin and from shame. Freedom from fear and anger. Freedom is something we like to think we understand well, but we have so many ways of getting it all wrong. 
I think of that famous line from that movie, A Few Good Men, you can't handle the truth. And I think when we hear the truth from Jesus, we might say, you know, that's right. We can't handle the truth. But it's interesting, Jesus doesn't call you to handle the truth. He doesn't even call you to understand the truth. Jesus promises that you will know the truth. And by knowing, he means that you will be with Jesus. You will dwell with this one who is the truth, abiding in the deep truth that Jesus bears to God's world in need, God's love and grace, forgiveness and life. The deep truth of God's love poured out for you, the deep truth of God's forgiveness given for you, the deep truth of God's call for you to live in relationship with God. Not because you have somehow earned it, but because God has created you and God loves you dearly, you will know the truth. And the truth is not some information. Rather, the truth is standing there in person, the truth of God's love born to you in Jesus Christ our Lord. We celebrate the Reformation every year, the end of October. It is a great gift to all who follow. Yet the most important thing of the Reformation is easily lost. The Reformation was about so much more than indulgences, so much more than a contending between institutions and all. The Reformation was about love. It is as simple as that. God loves you. God has created you, shaped you, and wants to be in relationship with you now and forever. God loves you, and this love is given and shed. This love is yours as something God does, something God gives to you. And so while we celebrate the affirmation of baptism of these three wonderful people, I wish I could say something amazing and profound and memorable, but the word that I have for you, Malachi, the word I have for you, Jaden, and for you, Delinda, is as simple as can be. God loves you. Jesus loves you. It's so simple, yet it is world-altering. One of the interesting things to me about the Reformation is it begins so small. Martin Luther in a backwoods corner, Wittenberg in Marty's day was, you know, story or something. Who can we pick on, right? And it's so small. And all of Western history has been transformed by this good news set loose. It's so simple, yet we really cannot handle it. We really cannot believe it. If I could have the three of you remember one thing from Luther's small catechism, and if I could make the rest of you memorize this with these three marvelous people, it would be this gem that Luther authored in his explanation of the third article in the small catechism, third article to the Apostles' Creed. It's in the back of our hymnal, page 1162. Don't look now. This is great stuff. You know, in each part of the creed, Luther asks, what does this mean? I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. I believe that I cannot believe. The Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in true faith. What a fascinating thing to say uh, I believe that I can't.
cannot believe. Yes, Jaden, Malachi, Delinda, Jesus loves you, and I think it's easy for us to looking at these marvelous kids to believe that Jesus loves them. But do you know what? Sometimes it's hard for them to believe. Just like sometimes it's hard for you to believe that Jesus loves you. Yet by the Holy Spirit, God has given us these three marvelous people to remind us of the great gift of baptism, of God washing over them with the water and the word and uniting them with Jesus Christ so that we could look at them. And maybe if we look at it just right and tilt our head a little bit, we can see as much as Jesus loves them. Jesus loves you as well. Believe it, as unbelievable as that might be. Amen.